Yo, what's good? I'm your boy Eddie, and welcome to Transformation 365. Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Huh? Now, these last few weeks, I've been dealing with understanding what the renewal process is. The Bible says, be no longer conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I already talked about how in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than yours. God sees things based off his will, where we see things based off our reality. Today I want to take that up a notch. When we understand our value in Christ Jesus, we'll begin to live from that. When we have our mind, that mind renewal process, we'll begin to see ourselves in the way God sees us and no longer in the way that we've been raised, in the way the world sees us, and in the interactions that we've had. We'll begin to see ourselves as God's children, as, as joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and we'll begin to operate from that value versus the value that the world tries to put on us. Now, I go into Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 a lot. And the reason being is because you look at God's original intention when it comes to his creation with mankind. Now, in understanding value, you have to understand a thing is valuable based off the material that's used to create that thing and also the branding behind that thing, the brand name behind that thing. If something is used with cheap material, then more than likely it's cheap. It's inexpensive. It's, it's cheap and faulty in nature. But the Bible says that when we were created, we were created in God's image and according to God's likeness. So we were created with God's stuff. As I said before, that term image also means living symbols reflecting God's glory or reign. So we were created with the understanding that we reflect the name or the branding of God as we live our entire lives on the earth. We were supposed to operate and function as God functions and operates in the heavens. What also determines the value of a thing is the rarity of a thing. If there is a rare jewel or precious stone, something that's not very common, then the value of it goes up. The same thing is true when you get to a limited edition automobile. If you get something that there's only 2,500 that were made throughout the entire world, that bad boy is expensive, correct? The same thing is true when it comes to people. Yeah, there's 7 billion of us on this earth, but no two people are alike. That is what gives you your value, coupled with the fact that you were created in the image and likeness of God. It's a well-known fact that no two fingerprints are even the same. Even if you're an identical twin with somebody, your two fingerprints are uniquely different. God wants it that way. He made us to be rare. He made us to be unique so that our value would be specific to ourselves and to his glory. Also, value is not determined by the surrounding environment in which that thing is found. You find a piece of gold stuck in some dirt, that doesn't change the fact that that gold is valuable. Yeah, you might have to clean some dirt off of it, but that gold still holds its own value. Same thing if you found a Bentley, but you found that Bentley in some place or in a neighborhood that's not necessarily all that great. That doesn't change the value of the Bentley, even though you might have found it in a place that's not very becoming. As I referenced before in Psalms chapter 8, David says, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you made him a little lower than the angels, and you crowned him with glory and honor, gave him dominion over the works of your hands, over all the cattle, the beasts of the field, birds of the air, over the creepy thing that creeps upon the ground. Pretty similar to what God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Now get this, the word angel is the Hebrew word Elohim. That word Elohim is translated everywhere else in the Old Testament as God. It's the same word that's found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 where it says, In the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. It's also found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 where it says, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over all the cattle of the field. The actual translation of that scripture is, You've made mankind to lack little of God. Or you've esteemed mankind a little lower than yourself. Now I tell you, if that don't speak to the value of man, I don't know what does. Our value is not set on where we grew up and the negative situations that we've been faced with. But our value is set by God in his creation. You also see this through the very specific details that had to take place so that redemption through Jesus Christ could happen for the believer. If you have your Bibles handy, turn over to Hebrews chapter 9, and we're going to show you a little bit of something.
I'm closing, I'm closing. Give me one more, I'm closing. Now, now I'm promise you, I'm closing soon. Glory to God, I'm closing soon. Now, like I said, in Hebrews chapter 9, we're going to start at the 12th verse, and we're going to go down to the 14th verse. And it says this, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered into the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if by the, bo the blood of bulls and goats and ashes and heifer sprinkled the unclean things, sanctifies it for purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who offered up him, who offered through the eternal spirit, offered himself up without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Also in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, the Bible says that we were purchased not with corruptible things like gold and silver, but with the incorruptible blood of Christ. Now get this, we've already said that Adam, when he was created, was a type of mankind, was the representation of mankind, and this Adam was made in the image and likeness of God. So Adam was God's image on the earth. However, the Bible says in the book of Colossians that Jesus was the fullness of God's image, manifested in human form, and was sacrificed on the cross for our sins. The reason why this is important is because it was only the image of God that was qualified to redeem the image of God back to God. What I mean by that is, is if something was lost, only something with equal or greater value could be used to restore or buy back what was lost. It works with any type of retail. If you go out and you buy something and someone comes to you and offers you something that's less than what you paid for it, then that cheapens the value of what you bought if you happen to give it to them. Case in point, I have a TV. If I were to spend $1,500 on this TV, bring it home, it's still freshly packaged in the box, I haven't taken it out. Then one of my friends come over, say, hey man, this is a nice TV you got here. Um, how, much did you pay, how much did you pay for it? I tell them I paid $1,500 for it. I tell them I paid $1,500 for it. Then they turn around and say, well, that's nice. Well, I'll give you $700. I'm sorry, what? $700 what? I'm sorry, what? Get out of my house. Get out right now. Go. You're disrespecting me and my purchase by offering me something that I told you was a certain value, yet you're going to come in and try to lowball. I, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. However, if I was to sell it to my friend at that lower rate, what I've done is cheapen the value of that TV. Even though I paid $1,500 for it in the beginning, I cheapened the value of it when I gave it to that person for $700. Same thing is true when it came to mankind. If God would have offered eternal redemption through the blood of bulls and goats, then what he would have done is cheapen the value so that the value of mankind was no longer after his image, but just in the value of those bulls and goats and other creations, which mankind was supposed to be steward over. However, by sending his son the fullness of his image to redeem and restore man back to himself, he showed the value of mankind that it was only his image that could restore his image. There was nothing else that could be used. Also, like I said, if anything else was used, that would have effectively cheapened the value of man so that we were no longer considered in God's image. Lastly, it wasn't just about us going to heaven when we died but it was about those who were in the image of God being restored back to that image so that we can continue the work that God before ordained for us to walk in. Ephesians chapter 2 says that we're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God created beforehand that we should walk in. God created us for these good works, and only those that have been restored back and redeemed back to God can function in the fullness of what God had designed for us from the beginning. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this message. I hope you guys have a blessed day and a blessed week. God bless. Well, hello there, OB. I pray that this video has been a blessing to you today. If you have enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the page, and hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified about every new video that I upload. God bless you.